instrumentation. This is important for both basic and applied research. Instrumentation is used to produce signals. For example, an audio frequency oscillator. It's used to measure the signal. For example, an electronic switch. It's used to modify the signal. For example, a bandpass filter. And it's used to analyze the signal. For example, computer hardware and software programs. The researcher or the clinician uses instrumentation to standardize data acquisition procedures to help acquire data under known conditions to provide a permanent record of the data. The input transduction involves some means of detecting and converting the phenomenon of interest into a signal. It could be pressure transducers, micro, microphones, strain gauges, Signal conditioning, the controlled and systematic way the signal is modified or manipulated, usually to aid measurements or to obtain a measure. The signal and any derived measure can then be stored. We also have to think about output transduction, the means by which the signal or the derived measure may be observed. Speakers, printers, computer monitors are all examples. Instrumentation, like statistics, are tools. And like statistics, sophisticated instrumental arrays cannot improve an inadequate research problem, and they cannot modify a poor research design. So if your instrumentation is no good, your study is no good. The principal components of a system should be identified by the manufacturer and the model number. You'll see this in the methods section. They'll say where the equipment came from, the manufacturer, and where the manufacturer is located. This again enables duplication of the system using the same or comparable equipment. And it allows the reader to determine if the components are reasonably standard pieces manufactured by reputable companies. If a new instrument has been developed for a particular study, enough information should be provided to allow the reader to reconstruct the piece. There needs to be sufficient detail for replication purposes. Has the instrumental array been used by the investigator in a previously reported study? Has it been used by other investigators studying the same phenomenon? These are questions to ask. References to previous research are of value in assessing the adequacy of the instrumentation. So if it's been established and used, that strengthens the study. Absence of references, especially when confronted with a custom-built instrument should alert the researcher to possibilities of instrumentation errors. Um, going back to that, so when I was doing my PhD, one of my colleagues developed a program and the whole paper was based on the program. And then as we move forward with different studies, we would refer back to the paper about the development of the program. Electronic and mechanical instruments must be kept in good working order to meet current calibration standards. It's essential to the reduction of a possible threat of internal validity, calibration. Calibration says the equipment's doing what it's supposed to do. It's important for a researcher to check the calibration of the instrumentation periodically during the course of the study to make sure nothing has changed from one subject to another. Calibrate your equipment. Instrumentation should not be changed during the study. A measurement taken with one instrument may not necessarily match those from another instrument. So you can't switch out your instruments halfway through your study. 
the method section should contain sufficient information for the reader to ascertain the adequacy of the calibration and to provide assurance that the calibration effects have not contributed to faulty data. There are also behavioral instruments. There's an enormous assortment of standardized and non-standardized tests such as paper and pencil tests, articulation tests, language tests, speech discrimination tests, hearing tests, attitude measures. These can pose significant threats to internal or external validity. You must carefully assess the adequacy of the behavioral, the behavioral instruments used in the research. Standardized instruments, that means they've been standardized or tested on thousands of people, are reported in the methods section. There should be a citation to the test manual, data on the standardization of the instrument, and references to previous research on the reliability and the validity of the instrument being used. You want to look for evidence of reliability and validity of standardized tests and research. Don't assume that a test is reliable or valid just because it is popular. Non-standardized instruments. Many studies make behavioral measurements with instruments that have not been standardized or published commercially. A careful rationale for the development of a test should come before their actual descriptions. You want to evaluate how the instrument was constructed and used to determine its adequacy. The description should be clear and comprehensive and allows the reader to determine whether the instruments can be yield valid or reliable results. So valid and reliable results can only be gotten from good instruments, adequate instruments.